My name is Sarah Bonda, and I'm a mom, but first I'm a wife. Um, I live in the Dallas area with my husband, Alec, and our two sons, Ambrose and Ezekiel. And I think there's a lot of fear that surrounds birth and birth culture. And so when we first started having babies, I feel like there was just so much to learn, so much we had to process. And there was just a language of fear that circulated it. And I almost equate it to like what the world says or what the world thinks about wedding culture because they're very similar, right? The world and the wedding culture tells you like you need to have this and you need to look this way and you have to do all this stuff just just to be married. (laughs) And one of the changes that my husband and I really took to heart when we were getting married was not paying attention to what societal standards are for weddings, the party itself. Um, And so wanting to focus on the sacrament and it really being a sacred time for us. And the same thing happened when we were having our first son. We had a very traditional, I would say, birth experience, Uh, went to the hospital, that kind of thing. And Throughout, I found that um, there was just so much fear ultimately that drove the decisions we were required to make or expected to make and the answers that we were looking for, the things that we wanted to learn. And so we took a class, um, which was really helpful. But with our second, we kind of had come to the understanding that our experience, while it was amazing with our first and really beautiful experience to bring life into the world, it was a very medical experience all around. And no matter what uh, birth plan you have, thing you choose, options you choose for your uh, birth experience, What God wanted us to understand for our second was that it's not a medical event that happens. It's a very sacred event to bring life into the world. And so with our our second, I think we leaned into that a little bit more. And it was really cool because the whole thing became a prayer. And instead of focusing on um, the fear and the anxieties of, is everything going to go right? Is it going to be like it is in the movies? Like, what my what is my body going to go through? What is my child's body going to go through? Um, it's easy to feel like you don't have control over that experience. Um, so we went in, obviously the second time around, with a lot of prayer, wanting it to be a sacred experience. And a um, couple of different things happened that I wasn't expecting to happen because birth is unpredictable, so you can't really expect what's going to happen. But leaning into the Lord and trusting and praying were were the biggest things for us. So the first thing was I've had the privilege in both of my births to go to Mass while I was in labor. Like my body started getting ready for this birth and started contracting and um, going through these changes. And it was Saturday, both times it was Saturday, and I knew... um, if we don't go to mass tonight, like the Saturday vigil, we're not going to make it to mass tomorrow because the baby is coming. And so both times I had the privilege of going to mass um, in contractions. And there's nothing like the experience of praying during the mass, um, during the consecration and hearing the words, this is my body given up for you while you're in active labor and sacrificing your body for this child. And um, so I really knew the second time around that I needed that. Like I need Jesus's body in my body to sustain this and make this happen. But obviously not everybody like goes to mass during labor. And so the second time around, another thing that I just felt like God was telling me in the midst of the contractions was not to fear. I was feeling like I'm a little bit out of control. You know, I, I have no control over when the contractions come and when they go or how fast my labor was going to be versus how slow. Um, obviously there's needs for interventions at times and things like that. 
So one of the things that I really felt like I surrendered to was God saying, you're not in control of your body. I'm in complete control of your body. And I've made you. I know every hair on your head. I know um, how many contractions you're going to have. I know when this baby is going to come. And that's obviously what happens. You know, there's only one, only one option is to get baby out, right? <laughs> and so he carried me through that. Um, so I think it's important also to remember his promise that when we're faced with fear, um, that his love casts out all fear. First John 4.18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And so I have to like focus on obviously the Lord's love for me and the sacrifice that he made for me um, out of love of his body to cast out my own fear, but to do the same for my child, like taking all of the, the worry and the anxiety and then also your understanding of the pain and the suffering and, and the intensity of this athletic event that you're going through and being able to uh, give that to God and lo- offer it as a love offering for your child. For me, there was no, <laughs> nothing more beautiful than after your child is born and you're, you're holding them in your arms, being able to see so clearly that God has put this abundance of joy and, and life um, into our family, a completely new person. And we had another opportunity just to, like after both of our children were born, just to dedicate them to the Lord and sing with them, like, Yay, we did it. Baby's here now. Let's um, pray with them and sing with them. And I, we had specific songs, you know, for each each child that it wasn't like we had picked them out, but they just came. Uh, worship songs like Jesus Loves Me and um, Shepherd and, you know, just great songs um, to be able to sing that over your children and remember that the Lord carries us through and he delights in us as his children. Um, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear.